Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been two years since I started my YouTube channel and it's been a few months since I posted my last video. So I wanted to give a quick update. Um, actually today I wanted to talk about some frequently asked questions that I get um, and I'm more than happy to answer, but I thought it would be helpful if I just posted a video on some of my more frequently asked questions so that everyone could have the benefit of knowing. So the first question that I most commonly get is, how are you? <laughs> how are you is a good question, but it's a tough one to answer. I mean, it is for everyone, but I'm doing pretty well. In my previous video, I talked about a recent collapse that I've had. I'm, I'm back to normal, feeling good about everything. So about a month ago, I was actually struggling a bit, um, thinking about the idea of a best friend. I've looked back at my life. I've had a best friend, but it's been, a different person for every three or so years. And that's kind of been difficult for me, but I also think that that's kind of part of life. But just as I've gone through, you know, like my teenage years while I was at home um, and then college and, and then now after college, you know, it's very natural for people to be in my life for a period of time and then they leave for whatever reason. Um, with that being said, I have a few friends that are moving away, um, both both out of my apartment and kind of away from Utah. <laughs> and because of that, I've been kind of looking around for a new friend that I can hang out with and become really close with. So if you had asked me how I was doing about a couple of weeks ago, I would have been a little worried um, because I didn't know how I was going to find this new best friend. Yeah, actually, I had a, a little bit of a collapse where I realized that I was losing my best friend. And this is because he and his wife are moving away. And so I was just kind of left being like, hmm, I guess I'm back to where I was a few years ago, again, looking for a new best friend. And for some reason, I was a bit discouraged. And, and I say that because, I mean, it's understandable why I was discouraged, but I say that because in the past, I've prayed for, you know, finding a best friend and it's always worked out. And so I guess I'm a little bit surprised that I was, I'm not disappointed, but I was a little surprised that I was kind of not sure how it was going to work and how Heavenly Father was going to help me with that. But in the worst of the collapse, I went to church and there were two speakers. Uh, one of them, uh, her name is Natalie. She spoke of some really personal experiences that ultimately were a good reminder to me to trust that the Lord has a plan for everything and he has a plan for me and I just needed to trust in that plan. The second speaker is her husband, Nathan, and he did a great job helping me to remember the importance of doing my part. So I, I can't just expect God to take care of all of my problems I need to do my part and then stand still and wait and, and kind of watch and let God do his part so those were great reminders to me that yes I need to trust and you know things will work out but I also need to be proactive since then I actually have found a lot of really good people and people that I hope to cultivate friendships with that who knows could be my next best friend so we will see how that goes um, but I'm very hopeful and most of all, I'm very grateful that I feel like the Lord is listening to my prayers and he is aware of my worries and my concerns and he really does have everything taken care of and I just need to trust him. So I'm doing great. <laughs> my second most frequently asked question is when did I realize that I'm gay? I realized that I'm gay when I was on my mission. I So I served in the Australia Melbourne mission and I was a Mandarin speaking missionary. And there was an apartment that I was staying in at a time with uh, me, my companion, and then another companionship. So there were four of us in that apartment or flat as we call it in Australia. And there was one night when one of the missionaries was walking around without his shirt on for some reason. And I noticed and was like, dang, that guy's really hot. <laughs> and that's kind of when it hit that like, oh my gosh, I think I'm gay. And then as I started thinking about it, and started looking back at my life, like through my junior high and high school years, and the people that I kind of felt drawn to and attracted to, it all just made sense. And and I'm kind of embarrassed that it took that long, but it happened when it happened and it helped answer a lot of questions, but then it also kind of opened up a lot of other questions. 
especially with just the fear of being rejected and and then just what my life would look like as someone who is gay and things like that. And so that's that was a big roller coaster that I might get into in another video. The next question is what was it like coming out to your family? So for me, I had a very, very positive experience, but it first started with me coming out to my oldest brother, Jay. This, so this was when I was at BYU still, and I had reached out to him and let him know that like, hey, there's something personal that I wanted to talk to you about. But I didn't actually come out to him at that time. Um, I was more just kind of testing the waters and seeing how he would respond to, you know, something sharing something really personal. And he was really supportive and very open which gave me the confidence and the assurance that I could then come out to him, which I did then later on. And of course, he was super loving and accepting and very validating. And yeah, it was the perfect response. And so that gave me the confidence to then come out to my parents. And then later on, I came out to my sister and my younger brother. So I've been very fortunate that my family have been all very positive they may not have all understood everything, which is totally understandable. Um, they had questions and wondered things, but for the most part, it was very positive and very supportive. And I felt very loved and accepted, which is so, so, so important. And something that I don't take for granted because I know it's not the, that way for a lot of people. And on that note, I think for any of you who are going through, you know, either deciding if you want to come out or coming out and it's not you know, the best response from your family. Just try to be understanding and patient with them. It's a big thing for them to take in. We want to try to create the the safe and vulnerable environment. And sometimes we expect out of other people to be patient and understanding, but that can't always be the case. And so sometimes it has to be us that tries to create that safe, vulnerable, patient, understanding and loving environment. And hopefully eventually our family will as well. Okay, the next question that I commonly get is what was it like dating? Um, so I dated a couple of girls and we, um, there were a couple of them that we got pretty serious with, uh, that we, you know, the relationship got pretty serious. In fact, the last one that I dated, we, I think we were both in a place that we were willing to, so I had come out to her and we were willing to kind of give it a try, this like mixed orientation marriage type of thing. And, you know, we just really clicked personality wise um, and I loved spending time with her. I thought we had really good chemistry. And so we really considered getting married, but we both prayed about it and felt that it was not the right thing. And it was difficult because as we talked about it and processed what it would be like and what our relationship would look like, it became very, very apparent that um, it was very painful for her. And, and I understood at the time a part of that, but um, she said something that really stuck out to me that really changed how I view dating. She said, you'll never feel about me the way that I feel about you. And actually, as I'm recording this video, I'm realizing that I always thought that I was asking them to make the same sacrifice that I was of just not participating in physical intimacy. But actually, I was asking them to make a bigger sacrifice than I was because they would be in a marriage and would be attracted to their partner, but wouldn't be able to really act on the, those emotions and that would be torture like I, i'm trying to think what that would be like for me it'd be like if i was married to a straight man who you know obviously isn't attracted to me but i would be attracted to him and just never be able to express that that would be torture <laughs> i can't believe that i only just realized that um yeah i'm pretty slow to the game i guess but after seeing how difficult and how painful it was for her to go through that and for the previous girlfriend, it kind of made me realize that I don't think I want to keep dating anymore. I don't want to keep doing this to really, really good people that I genuinely you know, care about. And so I decided to stop dating, but I think what helped the most was the spiritual prompting that both of us got. And the reason why that helped so much is because I kind of took that as God's permission to not worry about dating and getting married. And it was kind of like, this weight was lifted off my shoulders of of this pressure of having to date and to and to marry and so that was really really important for me and i think was the starting point of a, 
a lot of healing and a lot of learning to love myself as a single person and kind of just paved the way for the rest of my, well, I guess for the current life that I have, like my adult life. And so, yeah, that was a real big experience. But um, in general, dating was fun. It was awesome getting to know these really, really awesome women. And they were so great. Yeah, like all of them were such amazing people. There just wasn't that physical attraction that I've come to learn is super important in relationships and something that I think we all deserve. So yeah, it was a good experience. Hopefully it wasn't too traumatic for them, but I definitely learned and grew from it. And I also really appreciated all of them for being willing to date and get to know me. And, and, and yeah, it was, we had really good times. So yeah. My next question is, would you ever adopt kids? I currently don't plan on ad adopting kids, even though I've always, always loved the idea of becoming a father and teaching children and raising them and providing a world for them to explore and a safe one to make mistakes in and to just learn what they love. I've, I've always loved that idea, but I don't think I will adopt kids and the main reason is because of this kind of irrational fear but still a fear nonetheless that if something were to happen to me as their only parent I don't really know what would happen to them at that point point. and so I kind of don't want to put my kids in that type of a situation and so that's kind of the main reason though I have wondered about whether or not I might foster at some point maybe I don't know um, that has its own challenges and difficulties but I think that I would be better for like teenagers than I would with really really young kids or like babies because it's sometimes very difficult for me to be around a lot of noises and things that are unpredictable and um yeah so you know anyways the next question that I commonly get is why are you still a member of the church um I am still a member of the church for I think three main reasons but there are many reasons the, the top reason is because I really believe that it's true. Like I really believe in the spiritual side of things, the spiritual promptings, the relationship that I have with God. And I really believe that this is what God wants me to do. And so I'm going to do it because of my love for him. Um, the next reason is because I really love the idea of eternal families. And, you know, one of my most spiritual experiences was going through the temple for my endowment. And um, seeing my family there at the end was the most beautiful thing I have ever experienced. And just to, to be reunited with them was so special. And it's something that I want to happen in the next life. And so that's definitely my second reason. The third reason is more is less spiritual, I think, but more on, of like a philosophy. Not, not I don't know philosophy or ethical, whatever it is. But I truly believe that the the version of me that is active in the church and actively trying to live by the the teachings, I honestly believe that that version of me is the best version of myself. And it's also the path that will lead to the true best version of myself. I'm very, very um, frequently inspired by how amazing people are that I meet who are not members of the church and people who were members of the church and have left the church. Um, like they are some of the most compassionate and amazing and selfless people that I have met. However, for me, I honestly believe that I need the church and its teachings and I need the, the structure and the lessons and the opportunities to serve and everything to be my best self and to become my best self. So in the quest to become the best version of myself, thanks to The Good Place, the TV show, The Good Place, I think that me being an active member of the church is my best shot at that. So the next question is, do I like my ward? I love my ward. We have some amazing members and it's very unique because I think uh, one month into moving into this ward, I felt very safe and felt a lot of compassion in the war just in general and it gave me the confidence to come out so yeah i came out super early to my ward they knew basically it was like one of the first things that a lot of people learned about me is that i'm gay and um i and that happened when i was asked to sub 
in Sunday school, I was teaching, um, I was asked to teach, uh, this was when we were doing Come Follow Me for the Book of Mormon. And so in the first two lessons of Come Follow Me, it's First Nephi, uh, First Nephi 2, and it goes through First Nephi 8. And at the time I felt prompted to come out in the first lesson and I kind of chickened out and I kind of regretted it because it did, like, it was really how I experienced First Nephi ch um, chapter two and the, Lord, the Lord's promise to Nephi because they're some of my favorite scriptures. But I was a little shy and didn't come out and was kind of regretting it. And then later, like the day after they asked me to sub the next Sunday school and I was like, okay, this is my chance to, to do it. And I thought it connected very well to First Nephi eight and just the, the kind of journey to the tree of life and to experience the love of God and how there are pulls and, and things that make it difficult to walk this path. I was like, yeah, I can definitely relate that there are those things, like the pull of the great and spacious building is real. I then came out and have only had really, really positive responses from my ward. And so I love my ward, it's a great ward. And there are so many really great and selfless and humble and, and just loving people. It's awesome. The last question that I commonly get is, what is it like being Elder Scorn President? Um, I love being Elder Scorn President, kind of going back to that third reason of being a member of the church. I have the reason and kind of excuse to meet a lot of people as the Quorum President, and I get to serve, I get to, it, it's kind of more of a push to become my best self, and so I love it. Uh, it's a lot of work and it's exhausting sometimes, but it's also very rewarding and I love the sense of serving the Lord and serving the people in my ward. So I love it. So yeah, that's my most frequently asked questions. Um, if you have any other questions that I haven't gotten to, please leave them in the comments below and I would be more than happy to either answer them there or I'll make another video answering those questions. In my next video, it's time for my third iteration of my favorites. Um, there have been several things that I have changed in that list. So I'm happy to share those with you. But uh, other than that, thank you so much for being with me on this journey. I love you so much, and I hope you have a great day.